Manager, and I'm joined by Bruce, our VP of Marketing and in-house credit and money management expert. We're joining here to give another update for the financial impacts coming from the COVID-19 virus. And just to ask, answer any questions people may have, provide updates of how things are moving as things, things are changing by the minute, by the day for different things. There's lots of new announcements and Congress has been working diligently on passing the new stimulus bill. We still don't know all of the details for that, but we're here to answer any questions and to give those updates. How's it going today, Bruce? It's going great. It's been a busy morning. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, and I know there's a lot developing right now that we will have to add to what we've already talked about this morning. With uh, right. I've been on the phone and and on TV with a number of reporters talking about different topics related to uh, to what the lenders and the creditors are doing, what uh, what's happening with student loans, what's happening with mortgages. <clears throat> So that's, you know, there, there's so much that's developing so rapidly right now. Uh, you know, just like everybody else, we're getting news in the moment uh, as we're talking about things. So that's a, just this morning, it's been trying uh, the scramble of trying to A, catch up on what happened last night. And uh, just across town uh, over in, you know, over in the U.S. Capitol, there's uh news that's developing by the minute over there as well. So it's not just with the creditors and the lenders, it's also with Congress and what they're talking about and the programs that they're trying to agree on and and and, and put together. So it's it's been pretty busy, but and I may have slept at some point between yesterday and today. <laughs> hey, well, I don't know. A little iffy. Yeah. How about you? How are things going uh, with you? They're good. They're, I mean, we're managing pretty well so far. Um, my kids are asking to go back to school, which is surprising. I'm like, you're bored and you want to go back to school, which is I, it's good to hear, but it's also like, well, why don't you like being home with us? Right. <laughs> How, what do we need to do to change this? Um, so, and, they're, and they're giving you the, it's you, it's not you, it's me. Uh, right. Yeah. I just really miss my teacher and my friends is, um, mm. but it's, it's good. We're, we're managing and developing new habits in the house and just learning to take it one day at a time. <laughs> and yeah. It's, and, and I think, you know, one thing to ease some of the stress, kids can be, um, really, uh, perceptive when it comes to picking up on the stress that adults are feeling. Right. And, um, I feel like I'm slipping into Mr. Rogers mode, <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it, 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 it's interesting because I think I've heard from so many other people with kids and they're talking about this and they've actually gamified some of the adaptation that has to be made in the household right. to make it less seem less stressful for the children, uh, make it more yeah. fun and take some of the edge off of what is otherwise a very, very, very stressful situation for the adults in the household. Um, but yet I've heard you're not the first person who's told me that their kids want to go back to school, which is kind of, I never thought I would see the day when kids are like, please let me go back to school. That's <laughs> right. Well, I'm glad to hear it's not just my kids who are tired of me. <laughs> no, it's not. I think it's becoming an increasingly common phenomenon. Uh, it's uh, cabin yeah. fever, the kid version. Uh, yeah. It's not even like we can't really go anywhere. So it's like we're at home or we're outside in our yard. So it's a whole new trying to figure out how to keep them entertained and getting their their exercise and energy out is a whole, and it's been raining a lot. So it's been challenging for us, at least here in Richmond, um, to, <laughs> to manage being inside. Um, well, and some school systems are actually uh, doing more formal online classroom instruction throughout the day for students uh, in, in some states and in some school districts. Yeah. It's not the case for all students uh, of all ages in all school districts, but there's a really wide range of, you know, either formal classroom online instruction or uh assignments that are do it as you can that are distributed uh, to households and children or uh, sort of a limbo. Uh, right. <laughs> so it's That's kind of where yeah. we are. It's, they're still trying to figure out how to proceed for the rest of the year, but they have sent home some packets with assignments that you can pick and choose from. There's no pressure. And so it's just kind of 
loosey goosey <laughs> right now. It's, it's like yeah. just do what you can and there's lots of grace in in this whole process. Yeah, I think more will change in some of the uh, some of the districts that don't have any formalized plans right now. But that that sort of begs the question and this is a household budget kind of a topic uh, at this point because then with all, your kids having all this idle time uh, mm -hmm. that puts uh, you know that puts a lot of demand on parents. Okay, do we do we get them pay-per-view movies or you know like do we uh, how much do do we subscribe to new streaming services to keep the kids occupied? I mean, every decision you make like that has an impact on your budget. Uh, or uh, for some families, you know, do you have to pay uh, childcare uh, a little bit extra to keep an eye on your kids uh, while yeah. you have to work from home or do things like that? So there are all kinds of different scenarios that have budget implications here when right. you're home from school. Uh, so that's. That's another we're facing exactly those like we're paying more for a sitter to come in to our house to help with the kids while my husband and I are working from home and we're trying to evaluate what apps like learning apps like if we should pay to subscribe or use the free ones or those types of things too so it, yeah it's very real and I think a lot of parents are in the same boat yeah and that's uh, it's interesting about the child care though because that's a tough decision right now because at the, on the one hand you don't want other uh, outsiders coming into your home environment, potentially exposing your family right. to the, the coronavirus. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you, you know, you have to have some way to make sure your kids are occupied and taken care of while you have to focus on the, the job and the duties that you have in front of you. Right. Um, what, what, how are you coping with that? just budgeting <laughs> budgeting tips like making sure we're not spending in other areas and um not saving as much as we have been able to save recently so it's mm -hmm. kind of shifting our budget similar to all the tips that you're giving us um in my house um and then that brings up our first question about what other types of budgeting challenges like i've seen an increase in our need for groceries because we're I, they're eating around the clock, it feels like. And I'm like, you can't have snacks. You don't get snacks all day at school. Why do you need to eat all day? Right. Here? Um, so trying to put in like, you can only have this amount of food because it feels like we're going through so much more these days. Um, so I think lots of different areas that this touches on. Yeah, and grocery shopping, that's a big area <laughs> for, yeah. for a lot of people right now because on the one hand, with all this time at home, people are... Uh, finding themselves snacking a little bit more frequently, using more of the resources they have in their home. I mean, if you think about it, even little stupid little things like coffee, for example. I mean, when I, I go to the office every day on a normal, yeah. under normal circumstances, and the coffee at the office is not an expense that comes directly out of my pocket. It's there in the office and I drink a couple of cups a day. And mm -hmm. That's not something I normally even think about, but now I'm using my own resources at home. So I have had a couple of cups of coffee today. I had to pay for those out of my own pocket. <laughs> using, and, and so it's those kind of things that impact the grocery budget, but then you turn around and there's not the availability of the things that you normally get. So you go and you try to shop and the, the, the aisles of the stores, I mean, we've all seen the pictures, they're practically bare. Yeah. So that's a challenge as well and i've been doing grocery delivery because when you live in an urban environment you have a lot of choices for grocery delivery and that's one of the things that i'm really thankful for at least that i have that and i can use um, some of the different services either direct through the stores uh, or i can go and use a service you know i can use peapod i can use some of those uh, amazon amazon fresh whole foods uh, safeway has a direct delivery service yeah. target uh, so there are a lot of options, but unfortunately, not every option, um, not every option fills the need, and you have to be very competitive about shopping and pricing too. Prices are going up on items that are in high demand and low supply, mm -hmm. so your your budget is going to get stretched in ways that you may not expect, and for items that you may not have anticipated would be more costly. So you have to be very careful about making the most of your money. And one of my first tips would be to try to limit the number of times that you have to do your shopping. 
it's the same as I advise people to do when they can get out of the house. You don't want to go back and forth to the grocery store every day because it also adds to fuel costs and other things. Well, yeah. the same rule can apply for online delivery because there are delivery fees for some of these. If you don't make a, if 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 you don't make the minimum uh, order amount. Yeah. then they will charge you extra for delivery. Well, that's extra money that you're paying and not getting any groceries in return for it. You're just getting them delivered, but at a higher right. cost. So the less frequently you're doing your online shopping and your grocery delivery, the less likely it is that you're going to have to pay that delivery fee because your order might be larger. Um, and that helps you save money a little bit on the bottom line. You can also buy larger quantities, which could also lead to savings. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are a lot of virtual coupons that you can take advantage of on these grocery apps uh, that can save you if you're buying a little bit higher quantity. Uh, but just be prepared for substitutions in your order because I've been getting that a lot as right. I've been ordering online. Uh, the things that I'm looking for, they will substitute if that item is not available. And I've had some very interesting substitutions. <laughs> <laughs> I was hearing that from some family members. They were they're just trying it out for the first time, like delivery or pickup, and they're used to going in the stores. Um, mm -hmm. And they're like, I don't know if I like this because they're substituting and I'm not getting what I always get. Um, but I was like, you just got to keep doing it. It's gonna, it'll get better. This is not the typical experience that you would have with a pickup or a grocery delivery because there's such a higher demand. I was reading like Instacart has seen like a 200% increase in subscriptions and for delivery services for groceries. So, yeah. It's and there's uh, a lot of job opportunities in those markets too, because they need, they have a higher demand and need more hands to help. Yeah. That's an opportunity. So if you think about it, these services that you have an increased demand for, if you're in a situation where you've lost your job because of the crisis, Think about all the things that you need more of right now. Those are services that need to hire people to produce more, to provide yeah. more to the public. So there could be some job opportunities. I mean, it's not going to be easy. There's a lot of demand for those jobs as well. Uh, but right. if you act quickly enough and you keep your eye out on the, on the market in your area, you may be able to fill a niche uh, to provide services and uh, generate an income stream that can help take the edge off of this uh, terrible situation if you've lost hours or, or lost your job. Yeah, and if it's something as simple as picking up groceries and delivering it to a house, it may be something where it's flexible enough to bring your kids along. Mm -hmm. They don't have to get out. There doesn't have to be any contact. It could be a thing for parents to look into. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But there is relief that could be on the way in terms of helping out with your income stream, uh, your household income stream. One of the things that's been developing overnight and continues to develop this morning. And if you're watching, if you're not watching this live, uh, it may have already uh, sort of played out in its entirety and we may have more news to offer. But Congress is working on a solution for the relief package, which when passed, uh, if it passes based on the details that we've heard of, will include some form of direct payment to uh, American households. Which yeah. households receive that payment and how much that is, I think that's yet to be determined at this hour. Uh, but it looks like that may be the case. So if your household is one that receives a check, uh, you're then going to have to make some budget decisions about how to best use that money. And uh, this is where it's really important not to act too quickly, uh, to sit down and to look at your budget and take a very close look at what needs to be prioritized first. And we talked about this the other week um, in, in, in several of the previous videos about where you start in that process, when you get that check, when you have that income, when you look into your savings account and you see what's there, what should your first step be? And I think the first step under these circumstances is to reach out and talk to your lenders, talk to the people you owe, talk to your utility companies, see what kind of programs they have to give you relief. Uh, student loans are offering not just 0% interest automatically uh, over a, a 60 day period, but if you call your servicer and you talk to them and you explain your hardship, you could get 60 days with no payment. So that's extra money that you don't have to be uh, spending that can go back into your budget. 
uh, your mortgage company may be able to, your mortgage lender may be able to give you relief. If you have an FHA federally backed mortgage, you may be able to get relief there. So those are payments that you may not have to make over a period of time. That's interest that you won't be charged. Your credit card issuers, the same thing. They're offering forbearance programs. They're offering special repayment programs, low interest, zero interest programs. Your utility companies are offering special programs to get you through these difficult times. Um, if you're defaulted on your student loan, uh, if it's a federal student loan, the government's already announced that they're not going to continue pursuing wage garnishments and, 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 and heightened collection activity. So that means that uh, that more of your income will be yours to spend during this crisis. Uh, so that's another important point. So that helps you get a clearer picture of exactly how, mu how much uh, cash on hand resource that you have to work with during this hard time. So have those conversations and do that homework first then decide what you're going to do in terms of your emergency budget and creating that spending plan based on those programs that you can plug into. But how much that check is from the government and who gets it, uh, that's still up in the air. But I'll tell you this, if, if, if you're facing a situation where you're going to be out of work for three or four or five months, while that check may be nice, and it may help you in the short term, I think it's very important still to have that uh, conversation about what do you do when that check runs out? Right. <clears throat> and that's a difficult conversation to have, and you may not want to have it. It's very uncomfortable. Right. But I think to assist in that, it's important to reach out to a nonprofit credit counseling agency. Nonprofit credit counseling agencies through the NFCC at nfcc.org can guide you through that process. You have a, you're talking to a financial professional, a nonprofit financial expert who can help you get through some of those tough decisions that you have to make and can provide uh, answers that are appropriate for your unique situation, your circumstances. Yeah. So you have right. an action plan that you can use. Uh, it's especially helpful if you have more than one credit card. Like if you have to, if you would need to creditors, uh, it's helpful to call and talk to a nonprofit credit counselor because yeah. they can help you with all of them at the same time. Yeah, that's very important because the, the 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 thought of having to call five, six or seven or eight credit card companies and then turn around and call your mortgage lender and then turn around and call all the others that you owe. I mean, it's it's I it are it, the headache starts before the calls even happen. So talking to a nonprofit credit counseling agency can help simplify what would otherwise be a much more complex, much more stressful situation for you when you have to have the same conversation over and over and over and over again uh, with each different uh, different lender. And, and we brought this up on another call earlier. In a lot of these cases, when you're talking to your lender, the last time they had an accurate, up-to-date picture of your financial circumstances was when you first applied for the loan. Yeah. And for some loans, that could have been years ago. So that means that you do have to have, you know, you have to explain everything all over again. So don't assume that they know exactly what's going on with your situation and how bad things are. Uh, and that really is a test of your patience. So uh, that's why it's it's probably more important than ever to have that first interaction with a nonprofit credit counselor who can help you sort things out, help make sense of an otherwise complicated situation, and then get you to a place where you can start putting things back on track. Yeah. And is there anything you want to like caution people about as they start to make these decisions, who to contact, where to go? What are your cautions? Well, one thing, I mean, first of all, uh, be very, very um, careful about the messages that you act on. You're probably going to be hearing a lot about uh, quick and easy debt relief solutions. You're probably going to be seeing a lot more commercials. Uh, from uh, debt settlement companies that are offering you a quick way out of your debt. Uh, I, would, I would urge everyone to be very cautious about those messages and think not only about the short term, which is uh, a, an urgent situation for a lot of people, but also think about the long-term implications of the decisions you're making right now. So for example, with debt settlement, you may think that it's a great solution for what you're facing right now because it'll help because based on their messaging, they say they're going to help you erase most or all of your debt automatically so you don't have to repay it. 
The problem with that is the message is not exactly a full picture of what you experience. And so you know, that's why you have to ask a lot of questions and do a lot of research on these things, because it turns out that while what they're offering may be possible in some circumstances, it may not be possible in all circumstances and is not likely based on the data that we've seen to be uh, applicable to everybody. So you'll end up paying them money that they're going to be tucking away into an account. Uh, and they're going to be forcing the accounts that you have into a heightened state of delinquency, which could put you at risk of being sued. Uh, it could put you at risk of all kinds of other financial harm while they're working out the possibility, not the guarantee, but the possibility of, of successful negotiations with your creditors to erase some of your debt. And the likelihood is that not all of your creditors are going to agree to a settlement. So that ultimately leads you to a much worse situation than you were when you reached out. And that's when you have, uh, you know, you're, you have more stress than you, uh, than you had when you went into the process and a big mess to clean up. And unfortunately for a lot of people who've been through that situation, it's a major disappointment. And not only are they in a worse situation with their credit health, but they're also out of a lot of the money that they paid into these trust accounts. So it's, you know, it's you have to think about the solution that you're that you're looking for. And with credit counseling, you're getting real time advice in the moment. The first session with your credit counselor is free. So you're getting good, solid advice. You're getting guidance from a nonprofit financial professional. And then if you have to plug into a program, you it's you're not forced into a situation where you stop paying your creditors for a long period of time, ultimately mm -hmm. making your situation worse you start back on a process where you're keeping your accounts up to date, you're keeping your accounts on track and ultimately working toward a situation where you'll be clear of your debt within four to five years, even under the current circumstances. So there are a lot of programs that are in place right now and a lot that are developing that can actually help you through a temporary situation, but also be better for you long-term if you plug into the services offered by a nonprofit credit counseling agency. Uh, so that's another thing too. And, and talk directly to your creditors too. I've, I've said that before. It's always good to have a conversation with your creditor to know where they stand. Um, yeah. But reaching out for what looks quick and easy in the moment could, uh, could actually backfire on you if you don't know exactly what, uh, uh, what the long-term implications are. Yeah, and it's important for people to not see their creditor as the enemy. Like they really are there to work with you and want to help um, based on the conversations we've been having with them. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly right. Uh, your your credit card company, your lender, they're going to try to work through this and they're going to be more willing to do it uh, with you if you reach out and you're proactive and you have a constructive conversation about your circumstances. If you're in the food service industry, if you're in the entertainment industry, if you're in the transportation industry and you've lost your income or your income's been significantly reduced, they... I mean, they're not disconnected from reality. They know and understand the circumstances that you're facing and they're realistic about it. And they know that that may mean that you can't make the payment that they're asking you to make. So if you call and you talk to them uh, or if you contact a nonprofit credit counseling agency and work through some of these solutions, uh, there's it's possible that you can work out something that fits your current circumstances and keeps your credit health intact. It's very important because when we all come through this and we will, yeah. It's important that uh, that you do what you can now to preserve uh, your your good credit, because that will be tremendously helpful in the recovery phase uh, when you do need to go and reach out and borrow money or you do need to get a mortgage or an auto loan. Yeah, well, I think that's it for our updates for today. Um, we'll be sure to update you tomorrow or as the bill passes and Congress and the stimulus, whatever comes out from there, we'll be sure to put out some content um, to how it will affect all the different audiences that it touches on. Um, but we'll be back and thanks. If you have any questions, be sure to submit them in our Ask an Expert. You can just search for it, um, nfcc.org backslash ask an expert. Um, <laughs> but that's it for today. Thanks, Bruce. And we'll thanks, Courtney. Again soon.